My son Eric Chase and I were best friends. I adored him. We shared sneakers and polo shirts. He was my life. 18 months ago, I got the call every parent dreads. My son Eric Chase was away at college, University of Colorado Boulder. He was a sophomore. It was 10 p.m. and my wife and I were driving home from a celebratory dinner. I just closed a chapter in my career earlier that afternoon. Fox and I had separated ways under amicable circumstances. My cell phone rang and the girl on the line was crying rather hard. To this day, I don't know why I went right there, but I asked, Kayla, is he alive? All I heard was no. Adrian, who had pulled the car over, was listening to the speakerphone. When she heard no, she literally fell out of the car and onto the active roadway. I scooped her up and we sat on the curb for two hours crying. Adrian repeated no, 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 probably several thousand times. The coroner found that Eric died of an accidental overdose from a Xanax laced with the deadly fentanyl. Since then, I've been on the front lines in the war on the opioid death national health crisis. I've hosted town halls with Sinclair featuring the First Lady Melania Trump twice, the Surgeon General Jerome Adams, the drug czar James Carroll, the director of the DEA Kellyanne Conway, Senators Cruz and Rubio, cabinet secretaries from the DHS, HHS and the VA. Every one of these events saves lives. We have dozens of calls, emails, posts from people who thanked us for saving their life or that of a loved one after they saw and or heard one of our town halls. But I need to tell you something. Each time I tell this story, my heart gets ripped out of my chest. I'm telling you this because something awful happened to me last night. I've always been completely honest and transparent with you, my faithful friends, supporters, and viewers. Last night, I was sitting with some friends at the Trump Hotel in D.C. Among several others, Hayden Williams from Berkeley was at our table. I was chatting with Hayden about him telling the story about being walloped on campus by a thug just because he was wearing a MAGA hat. I barely noticed what was about to happen. A guy who appeared to be talking on a cell phone walked by our table and turned towards us and said, Eric Bowling's son killed himself because he was embarrassed by his dad. It was a drive-by hit on me using the most hateful words a human being can deliver to a grieving father. I got up and followed this hateful moron out of the hotel. I started taping, and here's what happened next. That guy right there is the man who delivered the hate. He was walking fast, not breaking stride, even as he crossed Pennsylvania Avenue against traffic. He was weaving around cars. Now I chased him down and yelled whatever comes to the mind of a man who just been told his son killed himself because of him. Yep, I used some bad words. Yes, I followed him and yes, I shouted at him. But no, I do not apologize. Eric was my world, my life. He died by accident and certainly not because of me. I loved him beyond these words. But here's some more video of that night. Hey! That's what he wants, that's what he wants, that's what he wants, that's what he wants, man. Bro, I'm trying to tell you, bro. You don't Who want to go there. Don't talk about my son. Who are you? Not me. Who are you? Bro, bro, bro. If I were you, Eric, if I were you, Eric, 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 that's what they want. This is what I need. That's what they want. Come on, guys. Sorry, man. As you can see, there was a second guy lurking somewhere with a camera. He put it right in my face, like an inch or two away from my face. And he had a disturbing, huge smile on his face, even after I mentioned Eric Chase being dead. These men are despicable people. I asked my producer to blur these thugs' faces simply because I wouldn't want to expose them to the type of hate they had just dumped on me. My question is why, though? Why would anyone do such a horrific thing? Over politics? Just because I'm a friend of President Trump? It's an evil world out there. I've been exposed to way too many hateful comments on social media and in the media. But last night, I came face to face with true evil. Over politics, folks. Have we all lost our collective minds? We're all human beings here, and some things are just off limits. And the drug problem is universal. It should bring us together, not be used as a tool of hate to the vulnerable. 
While trying to enjoy conversation with friends last night, someone or some group walked into my world and delivered what they wanted to be a death blow. I'm sure whomever these guys worked for wanted me to shut up. But guess what they did instead? They picked a fight with the wrong guy. On September 8th, 2017, I lost my son. I left my career behind and I put my faith on ice that day, all in a three hour period. I lost it all that day. And this is what I have left. Therefore, I will not shut up, not a chance. Eric Chase would never allow me to be intimidated by thugs like these guys, so I shall not. God bless the President Trump, God bless his supporters, God bless the United States of America, and God damn those among us who use hate to fuel a political agenda.